What if we say that the world is nothing without Africa? Well, it might seem an exaggeration. However, after you know what Africa really means for the world, you will be shocked. There are secret reasons why Western countries, especially Europe, talk so much about Africa and portray themselves as helping African countries. Africa has things that the world cannot live without. However, these facts have stayed hidden. The fact that you don't think Africa is the center of the world proves that the Western media has successfully brainwashed everyone to think that the West is powering the world. However, the whole of the West got disturbed when a single African country, Niger, declined to offer uranium. But what would happen if all African countries stopped offering what they have been for centuries? Will the world reach a standstill? Let's find out. French President Jacques Chirac once said France would be a third world country without Africa. Because he was president of France only, he could only say that for France. However, what he actually meant was that without Africa, the West and the world would be nothing. Often referred to as the mother continent, because it's the oldest inhabited landmass on Earth, Africa has been home to humans and their ancestors for over 5 million years. The name Africa has sparked debates among scholars, with many linking it to terms used by the Phoenicians, Greeks, and Romans. Some notable references include the Egyptian term Afru, which means motherland. As the second largest landmass globally, Africa is surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, the Indian Ocean, and the Atlantic Ocean with the equator dividing it almost evenly. Known for its abundant natural resources, Africa boasts plenty of arable land, water bodies, oil and gas reserves, minerals, forests, and wildlife. With a significant share of the world's natural resources, Africa holds 30% of global mineral reserves, 8% of natural gas, and 12% of oil reserves. It also possesses substantial amounts of gold, chromium, platinum, cobalt, diamonds, and geranium. Additionally, Africa claims 65% of the world's arable land and 10% of its renewable freshwater sources. You can guess that with such a land, Africa provides food for the world. So is Africa the continent that feeds the world? Well, the answer is yes. Over 70% of people in sub-Saharan Africa depend on forests and woodlands for sustenance. However, unsustainable resource exploitation and illegal activities like financial fraud, illegal mining, deforestation, wildlife trafficking, unregulated fishing, and environmental degradation result in an annual depletion of around 195 billion US dollars of Africa's natural wealth. Recognizing the critical role of its vast natural resources, Africa has the potential to finance its development goals and achieve greater prosperity the continent must prioritize sustainable, outcome-driven, and climate-resilient strategies to harness its natural wealth. Africa's climatic diversity further adds to its importance. Tropical wet conditions prevail along the equator, the Gulf of Guinea, and the East Madagascar coast, maintaining temperatures around 27 degrees Celsius year-round. Savanna conditions in eastern and southern Africa feature cooler and variable temperatures influencing the cultivation of essential crops like pineapple, coffee, cocoa, and oil palms. Palm oil, a staple cooking ingredient in Africa, is as popular as olive oil or corn oil in North America. In Africa, annual rainfall ranges from 50 to 152 centimeters. The savanna region experiences a dry season lasting up to six months, during which crucial crops like cassava, peanuts, peppers, okra, eggplant, cucumber, and watermelon are cultivated. Millet and sorghum, vital grain crops for the continent, are also grown in this area. Northern Africa, particularly the Sahara and the Sahel, faces desert conditions, with temperatures ranging from scorching highs of 54 degrees Celsius to freezing lows on the coldest nights. Rainfall typically doesn't exceed 25 centimeters annually, and some areas may endure extended periods without rain. Date palms and cotton are significant crops in these desert regions. The reason why we are telling you about these details is the crops that Africa offers to the entire world. These crops and products run factories not only in the West, but in every part of the world, fulfilling the demands of billions of people. 
on Africa's extreme northern and southern coasts, a Mediterranean climate prevails, characterized by mild temperatures, dry summers, and moderately rainy winters. Notable crops grown in these regions include figs, olives, oranges, tomatoes, onions, cabbage, and cauliflower. In the Ethiopian highlands, where highland conditions prevail, temperatures are considerably colder, and rainfall patterns depend on the mountain's orientation to moisture-bearing winds. Agriculture, considered Africa's most crucial economic activity, is heavily influenced by these climatic factors. It employs two-thirds of Africa's workforce and contributes between 20 to 60 percent of each country's gross domestic product. Key crops in this sector include alfalfa, potatoes, wheat, cocoa, and coffee. But what about other forestry products? Well, Africa provides products that help house of the world. Forestry, involving the management of trees and vegetation in forests, is also a significant economic pursuit in Africa. Forest products contribute an average of 6% to Africa's GDP, the highest among continents. In Central and Western Africa, where forest cover is dense, the forestry sector accounts for over 60% of GDP. The export of high-quality woods like mahogany and okume generates substantial revenue, primarily to Japan, Israel, and the European Union. For instance, Okume represents 90% of the trees logged in Gabon and is used in various products ranging from residential structures to musical instruments to lightweight aircraft. However, Africa grapples with the challenge of striking a balance between exploiting its forests for economic growth and safeguarding these natural landscapes from excessive exploitation. For example, the Central African Forest Commission oversees forestry activities across Africa, advocating for sustainable practices in the Congo Basin rainforests. This commission established the Sangha Tri-National Landscape, a reserve spanning more than 1 million hectares, or 2.4 million acres, of rainforest across Cameroon, the Central African Republic, and the Republic of the Congo. But does Africa dominate in the fishing sector as well? Well, as expected, Africa provides seafood to the entire world. Africa's fishing industry sustains the livelihoods of over 10 million people and boasts an annual export worth 24 billion U.S. dollars. Fisheries are prevalent along Africa's coastlines and inland in the Great Lakes and the Nile River. In 2000, West Africa was a significant global fishing hub, yielding 4.5 million tons of fish. Namibia and South Africa are key players in the marine fish market, exporting between 80 and 90 percent of their annual catch. In Eastern Africa, nations like Eritrea, Somalia, and Kenya have established fisheries in the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. While smaller fish like herring and sardines are common catches along Africa's coastline, larger species such as tuna, cod, hake, and haddock are more economically valuable. You should know that Africa's vast inland fisheries boast over 3,000 fish species and contribute two-thirds of the global inland fish production. Unlike marine fisheries, the catch from Africa's inland fisheries is primarily consumed domestically, serving as a crucial protein source for the continent's population. The Great Lakes of Africa, particularly Lake Victoria, hosts the largest inland fisheries on the continent. Lake Victoria is the most productive freshwater fishery worldwide, yielding over 500,000 tons of fish, valued at 600 million US dollars annually. Nile perch and Nile tilapia are the primary commercial fish species in Lake Victoria. But how does Africa offer metals and minerals without which the world cannot survive? Well, Africa is a significant producer of essential resources like uranium for nuclear energy, platinum for jewelry and industrial applications, nickel for stainless steel, magnets, coins and batteries, bauxite for aluminum production, and cobalt for pigments. The reason why most European countries and the United States are so focused on Niger after its coup is uranium, which Niger made expensive. What's more, in 2008, Africa produced approximately 483 tons of gold, accounting for 22% of the world's total production. South Africa leads the way in gold production across Africa, contributing nearly half of the continent's total output. Other notable gold-producing nations include Ghana, Guinea, Mali, and Tanzania. Even Africa holds a dominant position in the global diamond market, producing 55% of the world's diamonds in 2008. Botswana, Angola, 
South Africa, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Namibia stand out as the primary diamond producers on the continent. But is Africa also rich in oil and natural gas? The answer is yes. Africa has substantial oil and natural gas reserves, primarily utilized for energy and fuel. In 2007, the continent contributed 12.5% to the world's oil production and 6.45% to the world's natural gas production. In 2022, African countries collectively produced 7.1 million barrels of oil per day. Nigeria, Libya, Algeria, Egypt, and Angola dominate Africa's oil sector, with many countries ramping up oil exploration activities to become first-time producers. Therefore, the natural resource economy significantly shapes Africa's built environment, influencing the development of human-made structures and buildings, major engineering ventures, and urban areas are closely intertwined with resource extraction and trade. South Africa is home to one of the largest gold mines globally, featuring eight shafts plunging to depths of up to 3,352 meters below ground. One of these shafts is currently undergoing expansion to reach approximately 4,115 meters, making it the deepest mine worldwide. But how is Africa monetizing its resources for growth? Well, two urban areas that illustrate the growth across Africa are Lagos, Nigeria, and Johannesburg, South Africa. These cities, both significant economic hubs, are witnessing rapid expansion alongside shared challenges resulting from their growth. Lagos is Africa's second most populous city, with a population of around 16 million. Its growth surpasses major cities like New York City or Los Angeles, with the United Nations projecting it among the world's largest cities. Lagos serves as Nigeria's commercial and industrial nucleus, capitalizing on its strategic location near the oil-rich Gulf of Guinea and the Niger Delta. However, the city's swift and unregulated expansion has resulted in sprawling and disorderly urban development, marked by overcrowded residential areas, burgeoning slum communities encroaching on unsuitable land, water scarcity, inadequate sanitation, and heavy congestion. In contrast, Johannesburg, South Africa's largest city, boasts a metropolitan population exceeding 7 million. Notably, it is the world's largest city, not situated on a river, lake, or coastline. Historically centered around the gold and diamond industries, Johannesburg remains a pivotal financial center, hosting Africa's largest stock exchange, the JSE or Johannesburg Stock Exchange. While mining activities are diminishing in significance, numerous mining companies retain their headquarters in the city. Johannesburg's economic prosperity is rooted in its abundant mineral resources, which support not only mining, but also various manufacturing sectors. These minerals play a vital role in the production of modern electronics, contributing to the remarkable growth observed in the global smartphone market in recent years. As of 2020, nearly four out of five people, representing 78% of the population, own a smartphone. More than half of a mobile phone's components, including its electronics, display, battery, and speakers, are made from materials mined and partially processed. Essential metals like lithium and cobalt play critical roles in battery manufacturing. In 2019, approximately 63% of the world's cobalt production came from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Tantalum, another metal used in electronic devices, particularly in tantalum capacitors found in mobile phones, laptops, and various automotive electronics, is primarily sourced from the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Rwanda, accounting for half of the global production. Among Africa's 54 nations, petroleum and coal are significant minerals in 22 of them. In 2019, Manchuria accounted for the majority of the continent's petroleum production at 25%, followed by Angola at 17%, and Algeria at 16%. Metals such as gold, iron, titanium, zinc, and copper are the primary minerals produced across 11 countries. Ghana leads as the largest gold producer on the continent, followed by South Africa and Mali. Industrial minerals like diamonds, gypsum, salt, sulfur, and phosphates are the primary commodities for 13 African countries. The Democratic Republic of the Congo ranks as Africa's leading industrial diamond producer, followed by Botswana and South Africa. Botswana leads in the production of high-quality gem diamonds for jewelry. In terms of mineral revenue, South Africa generates the highest annual income at $125 billion, followed by Nigeria at $53 billion, Algeria at $39 billion, 
Angola at $32 billion, and Libya at $27 billion. These five nations collectively contribute more than two-thirds of the continent's mineral wealth. But how has Africa become a continent the world cannot live without? Well, until now, you would have known that Africa provides the world with food, minerals, metals, and raw products. However, the biggest reason for the world's dependence on Africa is natural resources. Due to its abundant natural resources, Africa is indispensable to the global supply chain. The continent is a critical player with a diverse range of resources, from minerals and oil to arable land and renewable energy potential. Africa holds a substantial portion of the world's mineral reserves with approximately 30% of the remaining global mineral resources situated within its borders. Blessed with rich deposits of cobalt, diamonds, platinum, uranium, and other minerals, Africa plays a crucial role in meeting the demands of various industries worldwide. Additionally, the continent possesses 40% of the world's gold and up to 90% of its chromium and platinum. It also possesses abundant mineral resources and plays a crucial role in the global oil and gas market. With 12% of the world's oil and 8% of its natural gas reserves, Africa substantially impacts the energy sector. It's this energy that Europe longs for, because after the end of Nord Stream 1 and 2 delivering natural gas to Europe, Africa has become the highest priority. Without Africa's energy, Europe's industries would cease to work and homes would go cold in winter. There will be a standstill, incurring a loss of hundreds of billions of dollars. Not only that, but it will result in the collapse of Europe and the dominance it has gained after decades. Sudan and Nigeria, as leading oil producers on the continent, are vital for meeting global energy demands. Furthermore, Africa's potential in renewable energy, particularly solar power, enhances its global significance. With abundant sunlight and land, the continent can tap into significant renewable energy resources, reducing production costs and decreasing reliance on fossil fuels. This potential positions Africa as a key player in transitioning to sustainable and clean energy sources. Africa can not only produce clean energy for its needs, but can sell this energy to the world, becoming a key player in the energy battle. Embracing this transition to sustainable and clean energy sources, Africa leverages its abundant resources and strategic initiatives. With 60% of the world's best solar resources, the continent is an ideal hub for solar energy production, complemented by vast wind, hydro, and geothermal energy potential. Nations like Nigeria, Ghana, Ethiopia, Kenya, and South Africa lead the way with ambitious renewable energy projects to electrify millions, create employment opportunities, and drive industrialization. This transition aligns with global net zero commitments and presents significant economic opportunities, thus contributing substantially to Africa's sustainable development goals. Increased investment is essential for realizing Africa's clean energy potential and advancing towards a sustainable and eco-friendly future. And how do these resources contribute to various industries worldwide? The export of Africa's abundant resources is vital for numerous industries worldwide, ranging from renewable energy to digital technologies. These resources serve as the foundation for manufacturing essential components, playing a significant role in driving technological advancements and bolstering the global economy. Despite its wealth of resources, Africa often struggles to fully realize the benefits of its abundance. So, who truly benefits from the extraction of Africa's natural resources? The profits gained from exploiting these resources frequently flow to other regions, exacerbating poverty within the continent. Africa contributes greatly to the world, yet it often receives disproportionately little in return. While the world heavily relies on African resources, Africa doesn't always enjoy the economic rewards it should due to exploitation and unjust practices. In response to accusations of exploitation, the West argues that ensuring the sustainable exploitation of Africa's natural resources is essential for the continent's economic growth, development, and the well-being of the entire world. Advocating for a balanced and responsible approach to resource extraction, the West asserts that it will aid Africa's progress and contribute to global harmony and the fair distribution of wealth. However, skepticism arises regarding whether this approach genuinely benefits Africa. Reports suggest that every year, Europe steals natural resources worth $29 billion, 
And don't forget that these are the resources that can be traced only. Nobody knows what the scale of the stealing is. Furthermore, Africa is emerging as a significant player in the global economy, with nations like Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, and Ethiopia standing out for their relative political stability and economic diversification. This diversification presents an opportunity for Africa to reduce its resource dependence and chart a new development trajectory. The region's potential lies not only in its abundant resources, but also in the resilience and innovation of its people. The outlook for economic growth in Africa suggests transitioning from primarily exporting raw materials to actively engaging in global markets. As these nations achieve political stability and diversify their economies, Africa can significantly impact the global economic stage. Africa has deep ties to the global economy, with a significant portion of its GDP traded in product markets. The continent's economic growth is crucial for its prosperity and has broad implications for global welfare. Africa's rise in global commerce and trade can aid in the transition to net zero emissions, address the emerging impact of demographic decline, and position the continent as a key player in the international economic arena. As Africa evolves into a global powerhouse, its impact extends beyond natural resources, economic growth, and urbanization. The continent leads in a demographic revolution and is projected to experience the fastest increase in the working age population of all regions. By 2050, the continent will see a net increase of 740 million people, representing a vast reservoir of human potential waiting to be tapped. Beyond its economic and resource contributions, Africa's political diversity significantly influences the global geopolitical landscape and international relations. With 56 sovereign states, 54 of which are United Nations members, Africa represents diverse cultures, histories, and political systems. Interactions among these nations play a pivotal role in shaping global geopolitics. Diplomatic engagements, alliances, and conflicts within and between African nations have international repercussions, affecting global peace, security, and cooperation. Each sovereign state brings a unique perspective and set of challenges, enriching global discourse. Decisions made by African nations, whether in trade, security, or international cooperation, have far-reaching effects shaping global affairs. In conclusion, the world depends on Africa for resources, economic strength, political influence, and human potential. Recognizing this dependence is vital for collaboration, sustainability, and inclusivity globally. Africa's growth isn't just a local story. It's a shared part of our world where cooperation is essential for progress. If the world, especially the West, wants to grow unhindered, it has to acknowledge how dependent they are on Africa. What do you think? Does Africa get the same recognition it deserves? Isn't it true that Africa is portrayed as a continent that does not contribute much? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on what would happen if Africa stopped offering its natural resources to the world. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned. Deposit photos music.